see him. I have prepared a little bit of a, an introduction for Richard. And I have, uh, I'm going to try this. It could fail miserably. But I'm going to try to um, show you some of his pictures uh, over my description or over my introduction of him, because I think you can really, you know, get to know a, a person who has photography as his um, passion and livelihood by the pictures he takes. So I'm going to try this. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and we'll see if this works with my very questionable connection right now. Um, Richard Gwynn was the senior photographer at the Lawrence Journal World for 40 years, which, oh, by the way, Richard doubles my tenure there. Uh, <laughs> he's been to Cuba a total of 28 times since 1992. He has a new, new book or newish book called Cuba Faces and Places. And he also conducts um, private small party tours of Cuba uh, when the pandemic isn't going on. Um, I think he is the premier expert on Cuba uh, in this area, at least, especially from the standpoint of its people and culture. He knows a lot about history, um, but he has made so many friends in Cuba. Um, he actually just told me tonight he has his clothing there. So he has, he has a wardrobe in Cuba, so he doesn't have to pack heavily when he goes back. Um, I was convinced he'd know at least one person in this film, um, and I don't know if he does or not, but I can't wait to hear what he thought about it. Please welcome my, my friend and photographer extraordinaire, Cuba expert and all around great guy, Richard Gwynn. Good, good day. How's good day. That? Good. Yeah. that worked out. That was a nice selection. Yeah. It worked out. Yeah. I, I had, yeah. Uh, yeah For you. Pretty well. But um, so, so when last we spoke, you were watching the movie today. Uh, we got you up on Canopy and you were, uh, Richard lives out in the country. So we were worried about his internet connection tonight, ironically. And now it's mine that's in question. But um, you, you watched the, the film the first time through and you texted me like oh my god I feel like I, I I've been there I feel like I've, I've seen this before and I said well you probably were there in many of those places um, just tell us right off the bat before we get into your history with Cuba what did you think about the film and what did it bring up in you in terms of you know thoughts and feelings yeah yeah um... That, you know, I, I told you I'd seen it one time and I can't, I don't know where I saw it, where it was public TV or something. And it, it captured me at that time because they were talking Santiago. And <clears throat> so I rolled through it the first time. And the second time I was more into looking at a lot of little things in the backgrounds and, and not just concentrating on the people. I was looking for places to ID and, and as I traveled through Santiago and as they made the journey from Havana to Santiago and um, it reminisced a lot of stuff. Um, the, um, yeah, the Plaza del Revolution, they go by and, and you know, every, every, every time they made a turn, I knew exactly the turn that they were making on these main roads going into Santiago and getting down towards the center of town where a lot of tourists start. Um, uh, most tourists migrate to the middle of Santiago. Um, I, I really like the movie. I, you know, it, it shows how this music thing, you know, we talked music and, and I thought about walking the street. Like I, I, I get up at the crack of dawn and you know that. Um, and that's when the light is. Yeah. I'm, I'm out making photographs with the light. Um, and you, you walk streets, you listen to stuff. Um, and there's just, you know, I'll probably tell a million stories. I'm, I'm a talker. People are, <laughs> I talk your head off. Anyway, um, Santiago walking the streets. When I first got there, oh boy, I want to say it's mm, 95, 96, something like that. Tourism, tourism, tourism really hadn't started for Americans you, you find Europeans places because Europeans have traveled forever. Um, we, I was traveling with the Dutch photographer that I had met and we'd got, we'd just get in a car and drive. And this trip, we drove towards Santiago. We went from Havana 
Trinidad, Trinidad, Camaway, Camaway, Havana. It's a two-day drive. It's a long ways. Uh, you can fly, but you miss everything that's on the road. Uh, Cuba is like a time capsule in a lot of ways. It sits, it sits still in this isolated blockade that we have put on them. And but uh, the rate of of uh, oh the rate of tourism and everything is uh, the islands just exploding, uh, and they've geared themselves towards this. Uh, the, uh, the buildings are, they save the facades from buildings and they build a new hotel uh, around these buildings. So they keep the old look. So, and a lot of people like that old look. Uh, Santiago has a lot of that old look, but walking the streets, I, I, I started thinking of stuff and I'm, I'm constantly coming up with little head thoughts of young, young people in living rooms of homes playing old musical instruments. And these were Cubans. Uh, a lot of the movie shows um, blacks, uh, Africans. There were there were more slaves in Cuba than there were in the United States. So that black music is there, and it's still you. Um, there's oh, I can't think of the religion. Help me with the religion. Anyway, there's a religion that they practice at night usually, and all the women dress in white, men dress in white, and they have a religious ceremony in a home, and you'll see a lot of deities and deities in these homes. You see a lot of deities in, from the poorest home to the most affluent homes. You see deities and candles burning and an effigy and a cigar and a remembrance or something on these deity stands. Uh, but this is, then they'll have a, they'll have a show, they'll have a, a, a a ceremony and they'll dance and they'll play this African music and they'll play these drums that are stretched with hide on them. Um, even even in small towns, even the smallest little town you come to, you if you drive the streets and you'll hear music and you'll hear old people playing guitars or something out on a front porch. There's always young mu musicians are everywhere nowadays. Uh, music's is music's really embodied uh, in in the. Uh, island. Uh, as you know, the Rolling Stones played there four years ago, uh, and they're more into more modern music now. Uh, but the old music's fun to find. Um, we talked about a place in Santiago, Casa La Musica. It's across the street from a cathedral and across the street from a main uh, hotel there in Havana, and it's where old musicians come to play. It's lined with old pictures and you'll see it in the last of the movie you Kathy identified with it and I looked at it and identified with it uh, there's an old chairs stretched with cowhide and you, you walk in and it's music until the sun comes up most of the time <laughs> I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna show them the picture since this I don't is, know my yeah. background it Here's really it's very reminiscent of preservation hall uh, yes that's, that's the picture from your book there and yes. you, you said something about how the chairs were constructed in. Yeah, they're all all how all cowhide. All it's an all wooden chair with cowhide stretched on it, and you can see this bright pink wall. And yeah, these are all famous old musicians. And I think there were two that I noticed. Uh, Gay August, the the drummer, uh, he was in one of the pictures. The the man that's uh, passed now. Uh, that, and people, a lot of people always say, "Is there music?" Um, there's music on almost in every block in Havana, um, uh, even Richard, even in Little. We I just wanted to say in the chat we've had two um, suggestions for the name of the religion you were referring to Goya, Santa Santeria. Yeah, Santeria. Santeria. Okay. Yes, Santeria, and you'll you'll still you'll still see this. Um, uh, you know. Religion was banned in Cuba for a long, long time. And then Fidel figured out giving him a piece of the pie and opening up Catholicism again was a good thought. And it was, it, it, it eased a lot of people and, and it gave them hope. Um, whew, uh, these stories, north of Santiago, there's a little town called, um, a little church called El Cobre. Um, the patron saint is buried in that church and she is black. 
And a lot of people from all over that island of Cuba will travel by bus for days just to go pray in this church and touch this effigy and go home. Um, I, I <laughs> one <laughs> story, you just have yes. to stop me, I, all right? I'm going to, I'm going to. You're, I mean, because this, <laughs> this is so many stories, music, so little time. The, I music, wanted... the music is wonderful. And you, you'll, the music is, is what really um, inoculates a lot of people to Cuba. Um, uh, it's the flavor, it's the sound. Uh, it, from 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 the dance halls, from the cafes in Havana to the little towns in Santiago and those towns, they all have music and it's just in, in, embodied in every little town. Let's go back to 1992 when you made your first trip. Um, there weren't a lot of journalists traveling to Cuba, <laughs> if at all, in, in 1992. And yet you didn't really travel as a journalist, did you? No, no. Um, How'd you get in? How'd you get was, access? It was, it was, it was sitting on the front porch of a Jamaican lady's house, and the travel agent lady put up a sign, Havana, like at three hundred twenty-five dollars for six days. And this AP photographer and I looked at each other and said, "We're gone." So, yeah, we went over and bought our tickets, and two days later, we were on a little bus going to Montego Bay and on a little prop airplane flying into Havana and it was like going back in time. <laughs> wow, so then so then your next trip was within that same year? Yes, I followed up the next year and then I would start to go two or three times a year. Um, when you guys talked about Easter Sunday, phew, I've gone almost every time in the year. Uh, in Trinidad on Easter Sunday, there's a priest that comes from Spain and there's a huge church there with about 12 effigies and they parade these effigies around the town all night long. It's a, it, the town just fills up with people and it's a big thing to come to this Easter ceremony in Trinidad. Yeah, and so when was the last time you were there? Ooh, last, oh gosh, here we go. Um, um november november december uh a year ago uh right right and I, I was there and then i came back and after the first year we were getting ready to go and the pandemic came and it shut everything down and they're going through the same same order of business of, of things that we're doing uh it's mainly in the big towns like Havana, Santa Clara. I don't know if there's any in Santiago. Havana had a big break out of it and they quarantined everybody. And yeah, it's, uh, but they're working on the uh, serums right now and the vaccines now in Cuba now. Yeah, so you said you talk to your friends there and I mean, regularly and they say what in terms of timeline and, you know, because I mean, here we're just now getting to sort of a critical right, mass. Right, I'm right, right. You're just, it's crawling. It's like, like got to be crawling there. Um, um, the the family that I've stayed with for years, the, one of the sons is in the biomedical field and he's working on the virus, uh, the vaccine right now in Havana. And, and they're starting to distribute it among the older population right now. So it's at a start, like everything. It and it will take time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone here in the room been to Cuba? Oh. Oh. Okay. So, uh, Chris, do you want to talk about it? Like your experience there? Um, I was just looking on a map. I was only there for a day off of a cruise ship last uh, 2019. Yeah. To, to Siena Fuegos, is that in, how you in say Fuego. it? Fuegos, Thousand Fires, yes. It uh, was quite an interesting day. Had um, a, a trip into the countryside, saw some plantations, some historical buildings, had a wonderful meal, listened to some music. It was good. I'd like what to go of, back. What kind yeah, of music? Chris, what kind of music? Sorry, Richard. Um, I, I would not 
describe it properly, what immediately comes to mind is like a Mexican band that comes to a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the place. Yes. Yeah. The bay, is, the, bay, the bay is very pretty there. In the 50s, they used to have motorboat races there. Uh -huh. uh, also, I'm told the submarine pins are there. <laughs> Sharon, did you say you'd been too? Muted. <laughs> and I think I'm um, Yeah, I was there for almost two weeks with my girlfriend. Oh, and fine. it was incredibly wonderful to her only two or three years ago. Uh, Cienfuego, Santiago, uh, Havana. It, it, it was, uh, this film was wonderful because I'm not as familiar as Richard is obviously, but every place they went, I had pretty much, it, it hit the high spots, it hit the tourist yeah. spot. Yeah. And I've got, oh God, I have too many pictures and not as, as wonderful as Richard's, but everywhere you go, there are pictures to be taken from donkey carts, women with, with strings and strings of garlic that they're selling, uh, the fruit uh, drinks on the corner, the Santeria ladies uh, in white walking down the street with someone holding a parasol above her as she's a queen. Um, Oh God, uh, and then the facades of, of the buildings and some that you're there, the Palacio, you look across and it's blank, all the windows are out, but it's the ribs of, of the building are there. It, it is yeah. an absolutely, of course, I also had a crush on Che because he was very cute, but <laughs> you know. I, uh, I drink beer with Che's son in the afternoon. Is he cute too? Yes. <laughs> Damn, send him my way. I, there were wonderful uh, revolutionary signs. You know, the sayings of Che would be on the buildings and the, the murales, you know, the murals are, are oh, oh, I just loved it. Now and the some, food. Of those, oh. some of the murals have started to change now with time. Uh, they're, they're giving uh, <clears throat> more thought to, you don't see so much Viva Revolution and stuff anymore. Oh, really? Uh, it was still yeah. there in, in, in neon above a building. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. So it's 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 tapered now and they're they're trying to make take it another direction with a new new leader and sort of. Yeah. Make it more friendly, maybe for tourists. Well, they, uh, all, <laughs> all the old guys have got to die off before it changes because they're so hard ass, excuse me. Um, and there, and that's the way it was, and that's how they believed in the system. So, and that's not going to change. But now, young people are so uh, the internet's everywhere. I talked to a guy that drive was driving around the other day in a lot of, and he was talking on his cell phone. And I'm going, wow, this is just unbelievable that you're driving in Havana, and I'm talking to you, and you're on a cell phone. This. This has totally changed from when I first started. Yeah, it's, even in some of the rural areas, I noticed. Yes, there was yeah, communication, yes. and that yeah. freaked me out. Seeing uh, what I thought was a campesino, a peasant, and he's got the damn phone against his ear. Right, right, and, yeah. Uh, what also impressed me was all the colors of the people, their skin colors. Yes, uh, they, they gorgeous, mixed gorgeous. over the years. Yeah, yeah, that they're, they're beautiful people. They're it's you betcha. Yeah, it's it's it's. It's always a pleasure to go back and see and learn more. Yeah. Who yeah, else? I, who I, else has been? I, I has was sentimental else? just hearing you talk. I think and I, I'll Sally. Up, but if you can do it, go. Uh, <laughs> Sally, I think, has been in 2015. She's made a couple comments about Kansas City Royals and that sort of thing. So oh. they're, they're okay. smart. They're smart on the Chiefs too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sally, do you want to unmute and weigh in? Or no, you don't have to. Uh, yeah, she says Cubans love the Kansas City Royals. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so so they there just won. Oh, there she is. Go ahead, Sally. Oh, um, well, it was a great trip. It was um, through. Um, oh God, now I'm forgetting. But anyway, it was through an organizer, and um, we went over there for ten days. Elder Hustle. Um, and it was right after the Royals won the World Series, so everybody knew the royals and it was so much fun 
and um, great food, great music, wonderful places to visit. Um, but it was very impoverished. Yes, yes. You some some of the some of the poverty that I see in places that I go is it's just amazing. Um, and uh, I was. I stayed across the hall from this family that I've stayed with for years. And these, this couple, Antonio and his wife, um, Teresa, just the nicest people in the world. And they, they didn't have a license to have an Airbnb, but they, st I still paid them for a nice little room. And it was just, it was just as nice and as safe. And, and they tried to feed me and <clears throat> they left one day and I was putting something in the refrigerator. And I opened the refrigerator up. And there was nothing in the refrigerator, folks. <laughs> and they're feeding, and they're feeding me. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm out filling the freaking refrigerator. Excuse me, I, I can't deal with that kind of stuff because uh, they're the nicest people in the world to me. Uh, so I went out and bought stuff and filled the refrigerator up, and I leave stuff and. Uh, I, I people are the there I I've always run into the kindest people in the world uh, and I feel very fortunate in this fact uh, from tip to tip on the island of Cuba their people are so nice to me and they don't really they don't expect anything back it's just a common sense that I grew up in the 50s with and this sort of excuse me and, and, and tags me in Cuba a little bit because people care for one another um they help one another if they run out of something um when I go out on the road I'm stopping at vegetable stands or fruit stands on the road and buying stuff and taking stuff to the next town because the transportation of goods is real bad so uh, I, I I bring more stuff to Cuba than you can shake a stick at most of the time <laughs> Yeah, I guess that that speaks to the you know the whole the scene in the movie <clears throat> where the the people are you know have their their drums or their instruments on wagons and they're wheeling them back because they're borrowing the instruments uh, because they they don't own them themselves and right right uh, they're sharing stuff always they're always sharing some, something like that it's just. It, it, yeah, the horns that, yeah, that I see more musical instruments now. I think people are, because people were allowed to travel there for a long time. The stuff that was coming out of Miami when I would get to the airport was amazing. And people were bringing stuff and bringing stuff. And you see more musicians, you see more young people playing at night in, in restaurants, uh, jobs, the jobs, the jobs are coming from, from the music. Uh, and you know, You'll constantly hear ballet schools going on. You'll hear people playing upstairs and places. Uh, uh, every evening, there'll be a group of people playing on the Malacan, playing traditional music. So, music's a big thing. It, it's in it's helping the it's helping the young people even relax. You'll see people sitting around playing a a, a horn or something uh, alone somewhere on a street, and and they're carrying on what they've heard. Uh, yeah, it's it's Richard. Have you heard much of the rap Cuban rap stuff now? <laughs> How much uh, you want? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking of Kathleen the other day. I gave her a stick with some th uh, stuff on it. I was going to ask for the stick back. The the young gentleman that <clears throat> I stay with, who's in the biomedical field, always when I walk in, I'm always looking for music and he's he's got all the the latest videos and music for me on a stick and he just plugs into his computer and and downloads me all the latest stuff. So I'm watching all these new videos and stuff that they're creating in Cuba. And it's it's real interesting how how this young world is is migrating itself in Cuba. Because they're they're internet bound, they see everything that we see now. So once you start your mind thinking, it's it's inevitable that it will take off. Uh, when you when 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 I travel in the early years, God, you're stuck in stories. 
Middle Island, uh, I saw a Model A Woody one time and I thought, oh my Lord, a Woody. And the guy was driving the thing. It was a 28 and he was driving it. So I marked it on the calendar and we come back <clears throat> through this little town. Siva Niku, uh, looked like West Texas. Some palm trees, the road wound, and we didn't, work, you know, we didn't think we'd, we're just driving down the road and here it is parked underneath two palm trees. And I'm thinking, Lord. So we pull down, pull out, <clears throat> get out of the car. <clears throat> get little gentleman with wire glasses comes out. He says, coffee, su casa. Okay. So we walk to the backyard, past the Woody, and his backyard's nice. It's well kept. It's like a cinder block house. So we sit down and his little wife makes us a little shot of coffee and bam, the coffee's just like electric. So off we're going. <clears throat> he initiates me to walk into his house. Now we're talking music here. He uncovers an old Victrola stack of records, wipes one off, puts it on, <clears throat> cranks it, uncovers a puppet in the corner about six foot high. <clears throat> puts the music on and he grabs some strings and he makes this puppet dance. And I'm going, what? <laughs> Where did this guy come from? So he's bringing me constant little things out that he's created. Uh, you've seen Rock'em Sock'em Robots. He made a little stage with two skeletons on it and you look underneath it and it was all car solenoids. And I'm going, wow, how does, he plugs it in and it works just like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. So the story goes, he put all this stuff in the back of that Woody and went around to schools and gave shows. It's folk art. Oh, um, okay, I, I, I found that. I might just show them. Let's see if you... <laughs> uh, the movie, can you all hear me? Can you all hear me okay? Okay, I'm gonna to try to share this. This is a part of what, this is what he's talking about. This is Richard's movie that he made uh, about the book, essentially. Starts to come from the back of the house. Can you hear? Coke bottle looking glasses. Hola, hola, senor. Talk about the Woody for a couple of minutes. Coffee su casa. Here we go again. Go to his backyard. We sit down. I start to look around. Wow. Chisma. Uh, old typewriter. Some electrical things. Wow. <laughs> we start this slight conversation about the Woody. And how long has he owned the Woody? Last time I saw Woody was on a Janet Dean album cover and there were surfboards hanging out the back. Probably 1969 something like that, maybe 65, maybe earlier. Mm. Very, very nice gentleman. Coffee is electric. Every time you stop, the coffee is electric. This starts a conversation. He tells us about the car. He looks at me, he gets up and he walks into the house and he motions for me to come into the house with him. And I walk into the house. A little dusty, not bad. The stuff on the walls, there's a kite, there's hand tools, uh, about anything you can think of, it's hanging all over the walls, some covered in plastic, but very neatly put. He fumbles through some stuff. He goes over to a stack of records. He pulls one out, moves it off. He picks it over and uncovers an old Victrola. Cranks his thing up. He puts this record on and he puts this needle on and gets it to pause. And he goes over to a corner and he uncovers this thing. It's about six foot high, something like that. He's got strings hanging off of it. He starts the music and he starts pulling the chords and it dances. <laughs> Uh, you just, you just, where does this stuff come from? How do I fall into this? So he commenced to tell these, these stories about these puppets. First, there's this first one. The next thing he shows me is a little monkey on a bicycle. And he takes the back into the bicycle off and you look underneath it. And 
it's a vacuum from a wiper of a lot of car. I think when you put it, <laughs> the, the monkey moves around. It's hilarious. I don't know how he thinks of these things. He's genius. So we go around and around and he shows me different things and different things and different things. And he, he uncovers this little boxing arena hooking thing and he pushes it outside. You've all heard of Rock'em Sock'em robots. Identical. He pulls a plastic off and here's little styrofoam skeletons on this boxing arena with wires dangling and going all over the back bottom end of it. And he explains to me about how he made this and what it does. It's all car solenoids. When he plugs it in, they fight. It's like Rock'em Sock'em robots. And how he wired this thing with car solenoids, I have no idea. You're talking, this guy's probably 75, 80 years old man now. Uh, I make regular stops as I come up and down that part of the island uh, during this time. And he finalizes this story. He, he put all these puppets in the back of the wood and went around to schools, gave shows, it's folk art. Okay. West of Havana. Uh oh. Two and a half hours. Wait a minute. Auto piece to. Sorry. Um. So pictures. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can oh, hear yeah. you. Yep. Okay. Sorry. We're good. No. Uh, it's it's just it's just full of full of people and full of stories and 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 food and music. Uh, it's just a bountiful thing to see. It's just, yeah, sitting, it's just sitting in the time capsule. <laughs> so I want to read, I want to read what Sally added to the conversation. She says, it's a beautiful, large and geographically diverse island. There were farms established after the Soviet embargo. They grew mm -hmm. organic food. They get food rations and have socialized education and health care. They got several pounds of sugar per month, probably can contributes to the diabetes. Resorts on the beaches were owned by Spain. Yes. Yes. Okay. I want I also I want to open it up at this point to anybody with comments about the movie, your review or questions for Richard. We want to make sure that we um, you know get to everybody. Is is anybody else experienced Cuba? What about New Orleans? Yeah, I was really surprised, and I, I'd like to know if anybody was surprised as well at the the direct connection between uh, New Orleans, because I've been to Preservation Hall maybe three times. I had a roommate in college who was from New Orleans, and I went in college, and then maybe twice after, and um, that really took me by surprise for some reason. I just did not realize that musical connection uh, between NOLA and and Cuba. It's really interesting to me. There was, there was, there's, there's so much that intertwined before what we knew the revolution was. There was so much that was intertwined with Cuba. Americans would go to Cuba because it was a place to party at. Um, and, and they went there to party because you could party and it was livelihood. It was gambling casinos. It was this, all this exotic exoticness. Uh, it was the music, uh, and it, it became this mystique, and it was a mystique to us because we weren't allowed to go. So it even sets more of a tone for people that want to go when you're told you can't go to somewhere, because why can't we go to this place? And people will constantly say something about if it's bad to me, shoot, they shoot them every day in Kansas City. <laughs> so they don't shoot them in Cuba, and there's guns in Cuba. So. And I constantly have to go through these stories sitting at different 
restaurants and stuff where I know people at, there's a, I sit with a group of Cubans and people will tr talk to me about the shootings, whether, whether the first ones that started in, in Virginia and I would come in and they wouldn't understand why these people were going to schools and shooting children. They just, they, 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 they have a different thought about life. Yeah, well, uh, Jill, do you want to unmute yourself? I, I completely agree with you, and I want you to say it if you would about I you you're talking about the editing. I really loved the editing too. I love the colors, but yeah, there was just so much to look at. I mean, it was just little snippets of of people dancing, and then there'd be something on the wall, and then there'd be a guy doing the drums, and then it just changed every couple of seconds and it was really well done. Sometimes with current movie making, it's too much movement, but this was really well done. It was all in time to the music some of the time, yeah. Yeah. but I yeah. just thought it was fascinating. Yeah, I, com I completely agree. Um, and so does Amy and Jim, apparently. Uh, Kay says she was also surprised of the connection of New Orleans jazz. Uh, Shelly wants to know, Richard, did you know Spanish before visiting Cuba in, in 92? And do you know, and I will add, how much Spanish do you know now? Poco, un poco. Um, um, I, I, I know little, <clears throat> most, <clears throat> most of the youth nowadays know English because one of the things that Fidel did was start a program to teach everybody English because they knew he knew that we were coming someday. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of young people, a lot of older people know Eng, uh, English too. Um, I understand more all the time I go, and I can speak a little bit. Um, I can't. T I I can tell stories about how I've communicated with my hands and gotten things done. <laughs> uh, but no, most everybody's uh, English um, prone nowadays. Uh, it's, it's just that they knew that tourism is going to come and English is a major language that everybody's using. There's a, but now, now we have a new group. We have the Chinese are coming very, very thick right now. Uh, all the new buses, all the new trains are Chinese uh, in Cuba. China is investing in Cuba. So it's, it's hard for waiters and people to talk to Chinese. Uh, they know some French, um, they teach French in schools. So there's some communication done, but there is a language barrier with the Chinese. I can imagine, yeah. Uh, Gracie, do you wanna, do you wanna expand on your comment um, about the flashbacks? If you feel like it. Um, I just enjoyed that, um, it was comparing about the same time period or what they were doing, the dancing of the past and the dancing of the present and playing the instruments of the past. And they were just a very good comparison flashing back and forth. Yeah, I agree too. I thought it was extremely well done. Extremely well done. Anybody else? Oh, okay. Uh, here's a question about travel logistics. This is from Kathleen, by the way. Do, Kathleen, why don't you just ask your question for heaven's sakes? I don't need to. No, <laughs> no I've, I've um, heard through friends that have visited that you can't use credit or debit cards that are issued from US banks in Cuba. So no. you have to bring a lot of cash. And, and she said it was yeah. stressful because she was so worried that you know she was gonna run out or you know, I didn't navigate that. Well, I just bring a lot of money. That's, that's always a big thing I have. I have used an American credit card one time, believe it or not. Um, oh, really? Okay. Well, in, in the early days, they were trying to learn how to hide this, and they were hiding it through uh, European banks. Uh, mm -hmm. I was renting a car, and I pulled out a credit card, and the guy says, I'll take that. And I went, okay. So I let him have it. I let him have it. And sure as heck, it went to a European bank. And so they were trying to avoid that U.S. whatever. Um, <clears throat> That's always, a, you know, as I do my tours, I have to sit down with people because they always ask about cash. And I can almost come down to the dollar amount that you'll spend uh, 
And I always tell you to bring a little extra because you never know what curtails might, might happen. But um, they've gone to a new new system now where um, it's going to be American dollars strictly uh, to pay for stuff. Uh, the, the black market has instigated it to the point that the government can't keep up with the black market. So it's going to be all U.S. dollars now. There won't be any foreign currency. Everything will be in U.S. dollars. Okay. Um, yeah, Chris has needed special tourist pesos. You you used to have to get what they would call coops, C-U-C's. You change money for coops. Uh, and now as of, well, I think the end of April, the kooks of all will be turned in or devalued and it will all be US dollars now. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play before we run out of time another clip from this uh, movie that that or this film, the video that Richard made with some photographs from his book. This was probably my favorite part. It happens to be about the cemeteries. But my God, they're beautiful. And I just want to show you real quick, it's just a couple of minutes, some of the images and uh, narration. This is we'll a great place. This, this is a great place to see. Yeah. Yeah. Third richest, so we'll in, yeah. Third richest cemetery in the world. Okay, here we go. Um, the Cologne Cemetery, third richest cemetery in the world. And an expanse of marble rising from the ground and and stories from every grave every tombstone uh, i thought how am i gonna how am i gonna capture this thing how am i gonna figure out how to do this uh, ah six pack of cold beer you meet the guy that's in charge of taking care of the cemetery and he walks you around and he tells you the stories from a lady who was buried with her child a child was buried at her feet. They exhumed the mother at one time and she was holding the baby. Thus she becomes a martyr of Cuba. People come to this grave every day. They never turn their back on this grave. They kiss it, they touch it, they leave flowers. And it's a hope for Cubans. Um, a day start. Okay. Sorry, that was that was a little shorter than I anticipated, but yeah, that story about the mother and her child being exhumed was amazing. That, that's, 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 that's when you take time and you do a little more investigation and it, it and now here the stories come because there's so many stories. Uh, whether it was sitting down with Rodolfo and listening to him tell me about Shay and playing chess with Shay and and, and I asked him what happened the day that uh, Fidel marched to town. He says, we tore the parking meters out. You won't find a parking meter anywhere in Havana. And they're so upgrading our parking meters here in Lawrence. <laughs> there we go. go figure. <laughs> so it's, it's the stories, you know, the older people are so wonderful to talk to because uh, uh, you hear these pre, pre-revolution stories because all we hear is what what's gone on after the revolution. We didn't hear what happened before the revolution and the conditions it was during the Batista times and and the stuff. Uh, yeah, and those those are the great stories that I keep trying to find older people. I I'll buy a, a six pack of beer or a bottle of rum and and sit down and the stories just roll and it's it there. That's what's wonderful. The stories are just wonderful. Well, I've got one last question for you. You say now that you've got a, a suitcase full of clothing, your own clothing down there somewhere. You have stayed in countless people's homes. Um, you know, you meet someone and they end up putting you up for at least a night. You you meet people all over the place. Where is your where where is that suitcase full of your clothing that's waiting for you? That's what I want to know. It's it sits. Who's got it? it it sits, it sits, it sits in a, a, a second story of apartment building that I stayed at, stayed in for off and on for since I first started to come to Cuba. Well, since mm, 97, probably I, yeah, I started to stay in this apartment building and I've moved from 
one apartment to the next apartment. It sits in that apartment. I stand out on a handrail and I can feel a bullet from the revolution still lodged in the handrail. I look at Castro's boat to Grandma. I look at Batista's Palace of Revolutionary Museum. If you've ever watched Godfather 2 and they're running to go to Miami one night, they're all running from this building across the street from me. Um, um, I'm surrounded by former gambling casinos. Uh, everything was everything is in a walking distance of my clothes. <laughs> okay, so it's not at the it's not at the sugar plantation with the people that. That no, is, no, but okay. I, but I do have clothes. I do have a small bag there because I always forget bringing a swimming suit. So I've left a bag with my swimming gear there. <laughs> okay. Well, before before we run out of time completely, I'm going to share a little bit of the your friends who are the heirs to the sugar plantation and their house that is a block long. Yes. Uh, before we go, okay, is that okay with you, Richard? Yes. Oh okay. yeah. Oh yeah. This is a great place to stay. Yeah. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. How convenient. Let's try it. The road to Trinidad, third richest city in Cuba. Uh, the reason is sugarcane. Have a natural port, um, natural valleys uh, that water came down from the Sierras and they propagated sugarcane. Huge, huge acres of sugarcane. Uh, UNESCO has help Trinidad try to establish a resemblance of being old still. They put money into keeping things the way they were from the 1600s. Um, cobblestone streets, tile roofs. Um, you can't drive in some parts of Trinidad on the cobblestone streets because they keep it very historical and very quiet. In visiting Trinidad, I've run on to a, a lady and her husband by the name of Carmen and Basso Font. They are heirs to a sugarcane fortune. Uh, whenever I mention where I'm staying, people's eyes sort of light up. Um, they are like parents to me. They've educated me a lot. Um, they've taught me a lot about Trinidad. Um, their home is 500 years old. I sometimes sleep on a bed that is metal, has mother of pearl on the front of it, and it came over on a wooden ship. So grasp that one as you sleep in a cool night in Cuba. Um, the family home is a whole block long. You walk in to this old home, the women slept on the right, the men slept on the left. Trosso floors still, traditional trosso floors. You walk through the entryway. First time I'm there, I hear a bloop, bloop, bloop. And I look over and there's a little stand and also walks me over to the stand and he opens the door and there's a big jar. And I look in the top and there's a piece of lava rock sitting there and they pour water into the lava rock and it filters and they have clean water. Nice. On, on, on for the tour of this home. It's just, it's amazing what you're starting to see. Um, go to the bathroom, there's a tub, a carved marble tub that three people could easily get into. Not, not a problem and just as smooth. Um, it came over on a wooden ship. Um, you go out into the courtyard and it has a fee and it opens up. And the grandmother tells me the stories of growing up uh, with the slave children and the slave headquarters in the back. There's avocado trees, there's mango trees, there's naranja orange trees, a huge, huge expanse of land inside this place. There's a kitchen that sets out, all kitchens set outside of the home because of the heat, big oven, big grill, wood fired. As I spend time with Carmen and Basso and I learn the stories, Basso fought in the Bay of Pigs. 
He has wonderful stories that you don't get. Carmen was a cook for a while. And in the younger days, she told me about doing repair on sugarcane plantations. <clears throat> sugarcane plantations. Hmm. I didn't know there were any. That sparks a new interest of mine. Um, she shows me on a map where these sugarcane plantations are. So I start to find them one by one by one. There are five remaining sugarcane plantation foundations, or in one sense or another, what is left from a sugarcane plantation. And these go back to the 1600s. I start my initial run to find these things. I spend Kathy's locked. Yep, I think she's she's frozen. <laughs> Let's see. Darn, that was really is yeah, it's really, really fast. interesting. <laughs> um, you are frozen. <laughs> um, the sugarcane plantations are another real interesting thing. They're they're like um, to find these things that that survive the wars and the revolutions. Um, when I was talking to Kathy. All the wars have started in Santiago and come north. Uh, all the revolutions have, are, are, have started there. Uh, the people are different there. The people have a different atmosphere about themselves. Fidel and Raul both come from Santiago. Uh, they're, they're, they're more staunch. They're more defiant. Uh, yeah, that the people down there, they see all the criminals learn what they learn in Santiago and they come to Havana to prey on the tourists. <laughs> Um, but it, it is, every trip's a new story, every trip's a, a, another find of something because there's so much out there. This, and again, the older people to me are, are, are real interesting, but I do have a, a good crowd of youngsters that take care of me. <laughs> well, Kathleen, did, did you guys see any of that video before I cut out? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, we saw good. most okay. of it. Yeah, okay. it was just at the very end. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, um, thanks Richard. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm sorry about my technical difficulties. I will figure that out hopefully here pretty soon. Um, thanks to everybody for showing up and watching the movie and uh, Jack for your desserts. And we will send those recipes. Uh, Jack, if you'll send us those recipes, we'd love to send them out to everybody. Um, and I'm unmuting everybody so we can say thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, thank let's you, uh, going back to yeah. Let's That's give good. a round That's of applause great, to Richard. Richard. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Very interesting.